one of the most human things that human beings do is talk to one another. This isn't controversial, indeed it's almost trivial, but it has consequences for the design and the evaluation of conversational IR systems. G'day, I'm Paul and this is work with Mary, Daniel and Nick. So here's the thing, social interactions run deep. We start learning about conversations quite literally before we're born, and social interaction is so important that interactions with media like software are fundamentally social and natural. I'm quoting Reeves and Nass here. We are polite to computers, for example, and apply many of our usual human stereotypes. Uh, despite knowing full well computers aren't social, we still do treat computers as social actors. Once these social actors can converse, there are rules and conventions in natural conversation. We need to understand these rules if we're going to produce more natural, more pleasant and more efficient software. Now, there are many social phenomena that might be important. So what do we need to take into account or prioritize if we're building a conversational IR system? In the full paper, we touch on five areas, basic theories of conversation, conventions and norms, moves and structures, affect, and what it means to simulate natural conversation. In the talk today, we'll just focus on these middle three. A number of basic conventions have been proposed for human to human conversation. Most prominently, the cooperative principle and notions of politeness. Going back 40 some years, Paul Grice spoke of the cooperative principle, which he put in sort of products terms, but which comes down to cooperating to achieve your mutual ends. There are four maxims, quality, quantity, relation, and manner. And if we follow these, we get conversation which is natural and easy to follow. So it's easy to imagine software violating Grice's maxims. Now prompts or messages are often unclear, and that violates manner and have either too much or too little detail, for example, violating quantity. Recently, Knievrich et al. have derived some design rules for conversational agents based on these maxims, but as far as I know, the rules haven't been tested. We're not aware of much work that explicitly addresses the maxims in search engines, so perhaps that's a good place to start. Now, Grice excludes norms that are aesthetic, social, or moral in character, his words, but these are clearly important, and others have come to the rescue. Uh, Leach, for example, suggests politeness principle, which is a necessary complement and adds more maxims. Brown and Levinson independently derive similar behavioral norms from two related notions of face. And similar rules apply in computer-mediated information-seeking conversation. Uh, Radford and colleagues have seen this in virtual reference desks, for example. We've got evidence that politeness is important even with machines, and it would be well worthwhile formalizing these rules in such a way as an agent could use them, and also to verify their effect. That's the rules of the game. There are still lots of options for each turn or utterance, but there must be some structure to natural conversations. Perhaps this is like actions on a search results page or in a GUI. Perhaps we can even imagine a state diagram. Actually, there have been several. Here's one. Rachel Reichman, who we met before, extends Grice, and she derives and discusses a grammar of conversational moves. Those are utterances that serve a defined role in structuring discourse, so presenting a claim, for example, or giving support or shifting the topic. She notes, quote, at particular stages of discourse, some conversational moves are expected and most appropriate. So there are constraints on what should be produced. And there are many other classifications, often presented as annotation schemes. A damsel is perhaps the best known. It's got over 50 labels, but there are many, many others. And just understanding which might be best for our purposes is already a hard task. So given an alphabet of moves using any of those schemes, some sequences are still more likely or more correct. And again, there's a lot we can draw on here. In conversational analysis, particularly following Shigloff, we see adjacency pairs, where the type of the first turn constrains that of the second, or the first provokes the second. Conventional pairs are, for example, greeting-greeting or question-answer, but in IR we might see others. And in interactive IR, Daniels looked at non-specific inquiries and found particular patterns of sequencing, quoting here. So there are conventional conversational sequences and structures, and that should be useful for the design of conversational IR agents in at least three ways. We can use them to interpret utterances, we can use them to inform the agent's response, and we can use them to inform evaluation. Now, we also know that nonverbal behaviors can carry as much emotional content as words or more. So 
how should we think about an agent that understands and possibly produces these cues? Well, back channeling and mimicry of nonverbal cues is associated with increased rapport, liking, and affiliation. A Hatfield causes contagion, Lacan refers to a chameleon effect or social glue. And we've seen that if a human is more expressive in the visual mode, for example, maybe they've got lots of facial expression, but you've only got an audio signal, then they're judged as less effective at communication. That all suggests we do need to consider representing this type of affective visual data, and we might want to consider generating it too, to make use of these rich channels. And even if you only consider words, there are many different ways to say the same thing. The different ways represent different styles, and an individual's style is automatic and habitual. Deborah Tannen is a primary source here. She shows the differences matter in human-to-human chit-chat. In human-to-human -human information seeking, we see this as well. And in human-to-agent information seeking, we're starting to see this as well, although the effect is weaker. There's also lots of evidence that we align choices of prosody, syntax, or word choice. That's in human-to-human -human and also human-to-agent conversation. We even align nonverbal behaviors, even maybe physiological changes, and there's some evidence this leads to greater satisfaction. Therefore, maybe an embodied agent that aligns verbal or nonverbal behaviors would be nice, maybe. So we've seen some phenomena from human-human conversation from literature. We can build on this. We might want to ask three sets of questions. First, do these phenomena hold the software? And if so, to what extent? Does the task matter, the mode, for example? Second, what does that mean for our design? Do we need extra tooling, extra representation, extra planning, or new constraints? Third, what might we see if we get the design right? Conversation might be more natural, it might feel nicer, but maybe not. Maybe there's also a cost in time or accuracy, for example. We love data sets. Oh, this is fast growing, there are lots of choices. There are mixes of informational and transactional conversations, uh, chit chat to lots of tasks and styles. But I think we don't really have enough. We want multimodal data to capture prosody. We want decently long conversations so we can see larger structures, for example. Some more recent collections are getting close, but they're all lacking something. Collecting rich natural corpora would be great. And there's lots of metric work in IR, but not really lots of attention to metrics for conversational IR, or at least not many instruments to measure the phenomena we've been talking about. And some development here could be particularly valuable. So where are we? Conversation between humans and IR agents should be informed by what we know about conversation between humans and other humans. There's a lot of literature out there. It's just some concrete suggestions regarding embodiment, style, affect, structures, and even basic principles. There are lots of interesting ideas. Let's make use of them.